I do want to thank uh, the Centennial Committee uh, that have worked very hard uh, to plan for this year, along with many of you. Uh, and uh, that committee is, is right here. We have uh, Merv Sutton, we have Barbara Livingston, and Sue McLeod. And the three of them have put in uh, countless hours, and I'm sure will put in countless hours uh, more uh, in helping us all celebrate this year. Uh, it is my pleasure uh, to introduce somebody who needs no introduction. Uh, Jack Galante uh, is the great-grandson of Frank Devendorf, Yay! one of the two uh, founders, along with Frank Powers, of Carmel by the Sea. Uh, and everyone knows uh, Jack and Don, I hope, and if you don't, uh, you should. Uh, they are wonderful people, very fun people, uh, and really embody uh, the spirit uh, of Carmel by the Sea, and we are lucky uh, to have that. I'm extremely proud to formally announce is it to tell? the beginning of the Carmel by the Sea Centennial Celebration. Thanks for the fortuitous partnership based on trust and mutual respect between my great-grandfather, James Frank Devendorf and Frank Powers. The town of Carmel was developed, and the vision of these two men is what has made Carmel the unique and beautiful town that it is today. It was the summer of 1900 when my grandmother recalled a historic picnic on a point of land on the 17-mile drive overlooking the curving white sands of Carmel Beach, and he said to his daughters, girls, I'm going to build a town there. Well, shortly after, Powers and Devendorf formed a partnership whereby Powers advanced all the money for the property that was the partner's plan to develop, and Devendorf agreed to provide his entire time and attention to the daily management of the project. Both men were great lovers of the natural beauty of this area, and they shared a common vision of what the town should become. Devendorf stated, this settlement has been built on the theory that people of aesthetic taste would settle in a town of Carmel's natural, naturally aesthetic beauties, provided all public enterprises were addressed towards preventing man and his civilized ways from unnecessarily marring the natural beauty so lavishly displayed here. This vision and philosophy has been maintained throughout the past century by the caretakers of our town. And I am confident that it will continue to be followed for the next hundred years and beyond. A famous quote by my great-grandfather reads, quote, creation is a combination of vision and will. Vision gives the plan, but will is the human energy that builds to completion. Well, we can all be thankful as beneficiaries of his vision and his will. And thank you very much. In 1899, Frank Powers uh, was a practicing attorney in San Francisco. And in lieu of being paid for some legal work he had done, he was given a piece of land down in what is now Carmel. He took the uh, train down to Monterey, the stagecoach over then Monterey Hill, and uh, camped out by then the ruins of the Carmel Mission. Woke up in the morning in the fog, walked around the ruins, wandered over through the pine trees, down to the beach, saw the dunes, realized this was a very special place, and in fact, there was some value to that legal bill he had just collected on. And uh, by 1902, he had amassed 80% of what is now the city of Carmel. And really, I think what allowed the city to come together was the extraordinary partnership that he was able to forge with James Frank Divendorf finding somebody who had the passion, the energy, and commitment that matched his own. And I think the real other element that really contributed and complemented what they did was a recognition of the value of the arts. And this was something that uh, Frank Powers was joined in, certainly by his wife, Jane, an extraordinary artist in her own right, and one of the early plein air California artists who started the first art studio in Carmel and was a co-founder of the Carmel Arts and Crafts Guild. And uh, they really reached out to the community in California and throughout the country, certainly to the artistic community that was displaced by the San Francisco earthquake, and made it possible for people with very little means but great creative endeavors and imagination to be able to be part of this community. And to see it here now 100 years later, with all that's changed, how really remarkable and unique it still very much is, and 
the next hundred years are really the legacy of James Frank Devendorf, uh, Frank Powers, and all the subsequent generations that have really allowed Carmel to continue to be such a special place. Um, with that, I pass this on and say thank you very much all for being here. And it's again a privilege to be part thank of this. Thank you very much, Jack. I just uh, flew in from Washington, riding across the country, thinking about this ceremony, and thinking about my childhood in this town, and now surrounded by a lot of people who were that age when we all uh, remember starting out here at Sunset School. And I was thinking that, you know what Carmel used to be known for? It's children, it's schools. And so, I would hope that in the next hundred years we can bring kids back to Carmel and make this really much more of a family town. Uh, because we had so many fond memories. Murph Sutton and Nancy Sutton right there drinking in blue, it's later named Conrad's. They were drinking those incredible milkshakes after school every day. And Wendy Draper seeing Craig Smith and others in, in Kipps Market there uh, when we their, our parents owned those, the, the Smith family owned that. And we, we, that was a drugstore over there. I forget what this was here, but uh, I think it was a different building. But you know what, this was the center of town. This is where on Halloween we gathered to go roll pumpkins down the uh, hill. This is where we got in trouble. Um, that park is where I first got arrested for turning on the sprinklers during a, some kind of special outing where a lot of people were in the park. Somebody dared me to do it. I ran down the street and the cop car was right there. So this intersection has a lot of meaning to me. Uh, I remember when I ran for public office, the chief of police, Clyde Palman, called me into his office. and. Uh, was when it was down down the street here before the new police station and he said i'm going to do you a great favor and he re reached into a little three by five box and pulled out all these cards it was a quite a stack of them. he says this is your entire criminal career <laughs> hopefully nobody will learn about it but look carmel is a, such a special place it's so i'm so honored to be able to represent you in the in nation's capital because there isn't a day that goes by when people learn that I live in Carmel. And I mean, why would you ever leave that to come to Washington, D.C.? And it is, it's, it's a town that's renowned around the world. And I think what it's renowned for is essentially that it has not changed that much. That you, the residents, have kept the politics of, of preserving what uh, the powers in Diffendorf had, had built and imagined. And that is so, so important because uh, I remember when Ken White was mayor and there was a remember the uh, surge of the Japanese economy and all the Japanese tourists here and, and he would ask me one day, guess what the number one request for the city of Carmel is? And I said, probably where's the hog's breath in? And he said, no, he said, frankly, the request for the city is we want a copy of your zoning ordinance. I said, so nobody reads that stuff. <laughs> Technical government documents. He said, no, people come here. They don't just shop with their eyes they, and with their money. They shop with their eyes, their ears. They want their towns to look like this. This has been a model for how communities can be built, not only around this country, but around the world. They had to take that zoning ordinance, take it over to the defense languages to get it translated into Japanese. So. This is a very special town, and you are the people that keep it that way. And I'm so proud to be able to represent you in Congress, and I did a tribute to the centennial. Uh, here, I'm not going to read it all, because it's really all the history that you know about. But it's uh, forever preserved in the halls of Congress and in every library in the world. So I, I present that to you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> See, there are children coming back to Carmel. Thank you very much, Sebastian. It's always a struggle. You can't, you can't get, you can't allow this town to lax in its attention to detail. The economic pressures to do strip zoning, you know, expand the town, to make it all towns, and to um, sort of commercialize it too much. You've got to keep that that pressure, which is only through the citizenry that. Civil, civil society of our community. And I, I applaud you for all being here because for the next hundred years, uh, it's gonna be in your hands, in your children's hands, to make sure that the city 
is forever preserved in its quality and charm. And I'm really proud of the city that they've created a list of events here, celebrating 100 years of Carmel by having one year of 100 events. I hope you attend them all. Thank you very much. As a representative of the state, which must be doing much better than the federal government now, because ours is a little bit bigger. Although I have to, knowing your history in this town, and especially this, this corner, Congressman, I ran a bill this year on juvenile record sealing, so I think I had something to learn from you on doing that. I'm here, very happy to be here representing myself and Senator Bill Monning, and we bring greetings from the state legislature and a resolution. Now, cities, as you well know, especially here in Carmel, form themselves to protect themselves against counties and others making land use decisions for them. It is a way to take unto yourself your own vision, your own sense of yourself, your own future. Carmel has done that for a hundred years, which is remarkable given how young our state is. The city that I live in is very proud of a 50 year anniversary, which is significant. But going back a hundred years in such a young state is, is really a significant milestone and is worthy of a year long celebration to embrace what Carmel is, what it means to everybody, and get a sense for what the next hundred years will be because I know the city will be around for another hundred years given the strength, the passion of the advocacy here that you all represent. There's no group that has stronger identity to an area, to a town, to a city here than the citizens of, of Carmel. Bill and I applaud you for that. We applaud you for the milestone of 100 years, and we hope to be around for as much of the next 100 years as possible. Maybe the Mayor Sebastian here will be here a lot longer. So I would like to present this state legislative resolution from on behalf of the California State Senate and the California State Assembly. Congratulations for 100 years. Here's my pleasure to be here tonight, uh, this afternoon. I live two blocks down the hill. I just bought our house here. I paid more for a 50 by 80 lot than I ever thought I would in my life. <laughs> but I did that, and Janine and I did that because of what Carmel is. It's a community of arts. It's a community of history. It's a community of character and characters. And there's one <laughs> other reason. You can always walk home from the bars or the taverns when you're on the corner of Monteverde and 7th. <laughs> I, I, I come from a town on the East Coast that was founded in 1635. So I appreciate people that recognize the importance of understanding the history of a community and preserving that community's character. And if you walk down the main street of Hingham, Massachusetts, it doesn't look like a whole lot different than it did then. And if you walk down Ocean Avenue, you can see the preservation of character that we pride this community to have and to cherish. I want to, uh, I also brought a resolution or a proclamation, and I'm not going to read it all, but I would note that now therefore it be resolved that the Monterey County 5th District, on behalf of all citizens thereof, does hereby recognize this commencement of the centennial celebration of Carmel by the Sea and looks forward to its second century, century as the city on the central coast renowned for its cultural, natural, beauty and, and the tourism that makes this economy tick. I want to say that I've been to some parties that have gone on for a while. My wife just had her 50th. That went on for about a month. <laughs> Anybody who can go for a year in celebration, I'm looking forward to that. That should be a great celebration. I also want to say that uh, as we move forward in the next few years, let's make our best effort to keep this community together. And one of the greatest things that we actually pride ourselves on is being controversial. If you're controversial, it means you're getting something done. In this community, we get things done. I'm proud to be a citizen of this town. I'm glad to be here today. Mayor, congratulations to you and your community. You don't have to get up. I'll just leave it right here. <laughs> and, I, and I believe the next step is the uh, unearthing of the time catch vote by the co committee members, Sue McLeod, Mayor. Would you we like just to wanted on? to also, really quickly, uh, just a little gift for our dignitaries here today. So Sam and... Uh, Jason, of course, and uh, Mark and Dave, if you could come up really quickly. This is a bottle of wine that we did to celebrate the centennial. Um, and uh, the, the chief of police is here, so don't drink it yet. Uh, especially you, Sam, knowing your criminal history. <laughs> but I hope you enjoy that. Thank you. time capsule was buried in 1921 and it had a rather peaceful life until 1977 
with an errant driver coming down the road, uh, somehow knocked the whole uh, the whole monument down. And the uh, okay, can you hear me now? All right. Uh, the description of the original time capsule was that it was a ginger jar. What it looks like now is more like a piece of Tupperware. So I'm not sure what the transition was, whether it got run over with the errand car or not. The problem was, where was the time capsule? We have four time capsules in the city, one at the police department when it was built, one at the Carmel Heritage, and when Sunset was renewed, there was a time capsule buried there, and this is number four. But the question was, where was it? So the McEldowney family, who have been masons around here for a long time, fortunately had the uh, the original plans, and we were able to figure out that it was in the north pillar of the uh, of the arch here. So with a little bit of uh, probing around, we did find uh, the arch. Uh, we, we did find the stone, pulled it out, and we have a very nice collection of spiders. <laughs> so if any of you uh, are studying spiders, uh, uh, we can certainly supply you with a, a very uh, large collection. So at the moment, um, Margie, who, who is uh, pulling the... So Margie uh, is going to take out the time capsule, and I'm not kidding when I tell you it's a piece of uh, Tupperware. And inside uh, are underwhelming uh, items of uh, some pine cones, uh, a postcard, and that's about the size of it. So we, we want to uh, redo this, and at the end of this year, or the early part of the next year, for a new time capsule, which will uh, chronicle this year and be buried for another 100 years, or 50 years, whatever one decides that should be the life of this, uh, this new time capsule. So we'll be collecting all the events that happened this year and putting them into the time capsule. And uh, I, Barbara and Merv, uh, <laughs> come on. Uh, will, Merv will be working with, is Bill Godwin here? I don't see him. Bill Godwin, whose who's, uh, uncles, I believe, were the uh, Fred Godwin and, of, the, of the La Playa and of the Pine Inn. And so Bill and, and Merv will be working on the, on, on the time capsule. And if you have special things that you think we might overlook, please call them to the attention of Merv and whoever else, uh, if you know Bill, uh, and Bill. So with that, without uh, much further ado, what I would like to talk about just for a second is where we go from here. Uh, where's, the, where's the capsule now? You want to bring it over? <laughs> there goes one stone from the arch. I don't think it's going to fall down. You thought I was kidding. <laughs> Very hard to open. It's been sealed. <laughs> it's mainly pine cones <laughs> of the reading variety. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I don't think I overstated my description of <laughs> what you've come to see. You're welcome to come up and look at them, and uh, we obviously will refund your uh, entry fee that helps <laughs> make uh, these events possible. I I found it quite appropriate. Uh, thank you for uh, someone helping us kick off a celebration year, uh, and we look forward to seeing you at the next event. Can you, can, you, can you grab it up front and pull it down? Can you grab it? Pull it? All right. Yeah, <laughs> hey, buddy.